So now let's discuss more of the headlines and simple keywords with Adam No. Now we are joined by Adam on Zoom. Good morning, Adam. Nice to see you again. Hello. Good morning and happy Monday to you, Chia. Happy Monday. To Me too. Well, Adam, let's dive straight into today's first keyword. End of regime. End of regime. We're talking about the reclusive state currently. So the defense ministry has warned North Korea that any harm to South Korean citizens would lead to the end of its regime. This came in response to North Korea's claims of a South Korean drone flying over Pyongyang. So what's the latest? Right. So the North Korean leader's sister, Kim Yo-jong, has threatened what she called a horrible disaster over the alleged flight of drones over Pyongyang. The ministry criticized her comments as being hypocritical. It noted that the North has already intruded into the South's airspace over 10 times in an apparent reference to incidents dating back to 2022. Now, the ministry explained that North Korea is trying to deflect attention from its failures, like its unsuccessful satellite launches, by blaming others. They also noted that North Korea's launching of trash field balloons was an attempt to stir conflict in the South. Now, the ministry ridiculed the regime's panic over the supposed drone incident and urged the North to stop sending provocative balloons. They made it clear that the North's attempts to shift responsibility were not justified. Uh, Defence Minister Kim uh, Jong-hyun initially denied that the military had sent any uh, Mm -hmm. drones across the border, but the Joint Chiefs of Staff later said it could not confirm whether the North's claims were true. Now, meanwhile, North Korea has announced it had put artillery units near the border on full alert and increased air defence monitoring around Pyongyang and said the move was in response to the possibility of more South Korean drones entering its airspace. So the latest in a series of tensions escalating along the border. It is certainly highlighting heightened tensions between the two uh, sides, both both sides on a high alert and it's a deeply concerning development in already tense situations. So Adam, what's the second keyword? Trilateral cooperation. Trilateral cooperation. So the vice foreign ministers of South Korea, the US and Japan will meet in Seoul this week to discuss cooperation on North Korea and other issues. What can we expect this time? Right, so Kim Jong-un and, uh, yeah, he'll be hosting his US and Japanese counterparts, Kurt Campbell and Masataka Okano, for Mm -hmm. the dialogue scheduled for Wednesday. Kim will also hold separate bilateral talks with Campbell on the same day and with Okano on Thursday, so the day after. Now, the upcoming talks come about five months after the three sides held their last meeting in Virginia in May. Now, the three countries plan to discuss cooperation on regional and global issues, including matters related to the Korean Peninsula. They'll also explore ways to further strengthen trilateral cooperation. Now, the meeting is expected to address the recent tensions, uh, of course, most uh, recently, as I just mentioned, sparked by North Korea's claim that a South Korean drone entered Pyongyang's airspace. And they are also likely to discuss uh, potential provocations by North Korea leading up to the U.S. presidential election, that's happening next month and also how to respond if any provocations do occur. Now, additionally, the establishment of uh, what's tentatively called the Trilateral Cooperative uh, Corporation, excuse me, office between the three nations will likely be a key topic as well. Uh, the upcoming APEX summit in Peru, the G20 summit in Brazil, they're also expected to be discussed as opportunities for a trilateral summit between the leaders of South Korea the US and Japan. Of course, if such a summit happens by the end of this year, it would mark the first trilateral meeting, actually, since Japan's new prime minister, Shigeru Ishiba, took office. Now, a presidential official here recently revealed that US President Joe Biden proposed holding a trilateral summit within the year. So we've only got about two and a half months left until the year wraps up. So we'll have to see if such a meeting does actually happened. That's right. So as you mentioned, it will mark the first trilateral meeting with Japanese uh, first and the new prime minister uh, who took office. We'll discuss more with uh, Dr. Kim Byung-jo later on. So what is our third one? 
Order continues. So the audit continues. As the second week of the National Assembly's audit begins today, excuse me, <clears throat> well, the focus is expected to remain on the allegations surrounding First Lady Kim Goni and Democratic Party leader Lee Jae Myung. These issues are likely to dominate discussions overshadowing, overshadowing other matters. And so what can we expect here? Right, so last week the People Power Party targeted E's uh, legal troubles, which are still ongoing, he's still on uh, court trials, including charges related to election law violations and perjury and a slew of others. Uh, meanwhile, the DP aimed its attack at the First Lady, Kim, raising accusations about her involvement in illegal renovations at the presidential residence and the alleged receipt of a luxury handbag, as well as a uh, suspected a kind of involvement in mm. personnel appointments. Now, this week, again, both issues are set to take centre stage. Today, during the inspection of the Corruption Investigation Office for high-ranking officials, the opposition is expected to question the government about Kim's alleged role in candidate nominations and, of course, the death of a Marine. That's another contentious issue where uh, the government and military were... Uh, alleged to have been involved in the uh, probe into that matter. There will also be a focus on the Seoul Central District Prosecutor's Office, where debates over Kim's alleged acceptance of a luxury bag and E's involvement in the Tejangdong development scandal are expected to intensify. At the audit of Kyungi Province and its police departments, the PPP is expected to raise concerns about E's alleged illegal benefits to the regional currency operator Kony I and oh, sorry Kona I mm -hmm. and misuse of corporate cards during his time as governor now additional tensions are expected across various committees as well for example during the inspection of the Seoul Metropolitan Police Agency um, National Police Agency there may be a clash over claims of political interference in drug smuggling investigations the DP argues that the presidential office was involved while the PPP denies these accusations. Uh, there are also concerns that both sides are focusing too much on political issues and battles, neglecting their duties to monitor the government uh, and review policies related to people's livelihoods. Critics point out that the same issues are being raised in basically different committees mm -hmm. without any significant progress on them. A PPP representative said that while their lawmakers want to focus on policies and people's livelihood issues, they cannot ignore what they call the DP's political attacks. A DP spokesperson said the attention on the First Lady reflects the seriousness of her alleged involvement in state affairs, and they plan to uncover the truth. So mm -hmm. for the moment, it seems like there's no real end in sight in terms of these contentious issues and these political battles. But of course, in the public's eyes, uh, not the best way to go about these audits. Of course, it is a kind of a check on the government affairs and trying to get the best out of these uh, people's livelihood policies. But uh, for now, it's becoming a bit of an arena, a battle arena for that these is right. political issues. A battle and also DP's political attacks. Quite a controversy mm. issue indeed. So the audit should be continued. So, Adam, what is our fourth keyword for the day? Forced entry. Forced entry. The UN peacekeeping force in southern Lebanon, UNIFIL, says Israeli tanks forced their way into one of its positions early on Sunday morning. So United Nations interim force in Lebanon denounced the incident, calling it a violation of a UN Security Council resolution and demanded, demanded an explanation from the Israeli military. What's the latest? Right, so UNIFIL also criticised Israeli forces for obstructing uh, their operations. They stated that their command centre in Nakwara and nearby areas had been repeatedly targeted in recent days. They reported that Israeli soldiers intentionally shot at and damaged surveillance cameras outside a UNIFIL bunker. Uh, now, since the ground battles between Israeli forces and Hezbollah intensified in southern Lebanon at the end of last month, five UNIFIL personnel have reportedly been injured. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has demanded UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres remove UNIFIL from the conflict area, claiming that the peacekeeping soldiers were being used 
as hostages by Hezbollah. Now, UNIFIL has so far refused these requests, and Guterres also warns any attacks on peacekeepers may constitute a war crime, in his words, mm. adding that UNIFIL personnel and its premises must never be targeted. Now, UNIFIL, with close to 10,000 soldiers, serves as kind of a buffer in the region. 40 nations contributing to UNIFIL, including... Uh, South Korea jointly issued a statement condemning recent attacks on the peacekeepers and called for a proper investigation. Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni spoke with Netanyahu, expressing that any attacks on UNIFIL were unacceptable. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has also raised concerns in a call with the Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant about reports of Israeli forces targeting UNIFIL positions. Gallant assured Austin that efforts would be made to avoid harming uh, Unifil personnel, but that hasn't really worked out as of uh, yet. Uh, now, meanwhile, Israel continues to fight Hezbollah in southern Lebanon and Hamas in Gaza, this uh, two-front war, as it's being called. Mm -hmm. And, of course, this is raising further concerns of conflict spreading in the region and the conflicts are uh, possibly expanding into mm -hmm. an all-out war. So we truly hope there are no damages or injuries as tensions rise in Lebanon between Hezbollah and Israeli forces. And what is our last keyword, Ara? Starship test successful. It was successful. So Elon Musk's SpaceX has successfully completed its fifth test flight of its Starship, achieving a major milestone. It managed to successfully catch the massive super heavy booster that would usually just fall into the ocean. What do we have here? Right, so the rocket's uh, first stage booster lifted off from SpaceX's launch facility in Texas, then separated at an altitude of around 40 miles. The booster returned to land and the second stage rocket headed towards space as planned, unlike in previous flights when the booster falls away uh, and, as you say, falls into the ocean. Usually the booster slowed itself down and descended gently back toward the launch pad from where it lifted off for a pair of giant mechanical arms to catch it. This is known as uh, the chopsticks uh, maneuver basically because this uh, these robot arms are like giant chopsticks catching <laughs> the booster again now the achievement is considered important as it does allow the craft to be reused unlike previous similar rockets that crash landed back and could not be used again that's kind of been one of elon musk's key uh, selling points having these rockets launched but then being reused again that's one of his key goals now space uh, spacex engineers had prepared for this rocket catching system for years running multiple tests over the past few months now when the booster successfully landed the spacex team as you'd expect erupted in applause and cheers uh, meanwhile the second stage uh, the starship uh, spacecraft continued its planned flight for around 75 minutes it reached an altitude of 210 kilometers at speeds of over 26,000 kilometers per hour following its planned orbit. The spacecraft then re-entered Earth's atmosphere and landed in the ocean without exploding, successfully completing its flight. Uh, this test flight was an unmanned mission with no astronauts or cargo uh, on board. Now, SpaceX had previously attempted four test flights in April and November of last year and in March and June of this year. Mm -hmm. However, none were fully successful. So, of course, SpaceX are very happy that the fifth test uh, was successful in all accounts and no damage was reported in terms of the hardware. Uh, SpaceX plans to further develop its ability to recover and reuse both stages of the rocket so we could see more tests uh, related to this in the future. So more tests coming soon. It's incredible to see SpaceX Starship test succeed and another major leap forward in space travel, I guess. So thanks, Adam, for today's coverage and we'll see you again tomorrow. You're very welcome to see you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.